This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from the creative dojo.net. Welcome to another episode of Dojo TV, a show where we talk about all things motion design and visual effects. So for our first story, naturally the big story is that After Effects now supports Apple Silicon natively, which reportedly can run three times faster. So if you're running on an M1 based Mac, try the latest version right now. Glad to see that it's finally out of beta. Stuff like the Adobe Sensei machine learning features like Rotobrush 2 and the new scene edit detections are a lot faster now. Playback is smoother and faster. For example, EXR decoding is now two times faster and ProRes decoding is up to four times faster on the new M1 Ultra Max versus the previous high-end models. And you couple that with the addition of the multi-frame rendering and now After Effects is significantly faster, especially on the Mac OS ecosystem. Speaking about Adobe, remember they acquired Frame.io a while back? Well, now they finally kind of integrated it into a whole new level now. So now After Effects and Premiere Pro customers will get Frame.io as part of their Creative Cloud subscription for free. So I guess quote unquote free. So once you update to the latest version of After Effects or Premiere, you just need to sign in into the new review with Frame.io panel using your Adobe ID or install the Frame.io panel if you're on an older version. And so basically Creative Cloud users will get 100 gigabytes of free dedicated Frame.io storage. You can upload your media directly to the cloud for up to five active projects. You can also have access to the Frame.io camera to cloud feature, which will upload your files from your camera so you don't need to spend time transferring or manually uploading files. I've never tried Frame.io before. It's basically like a collaboration kind of editing type platform, but now that it's included, I'm sure a lot of hobby filmmakers and editors will be excited to try it out. It's awesome that it doesn't affect the price of your Creative Cloud subscription, for now anyways, so I'm excited to try it out. Our next story is from the folks over at School of Motion. They released a new tutorial called 15 Must Know Shortcuts in Cinema 4D. So workflow is so important and using keyboard shortcuts can drastically increase your productivity and speed without necessarily sacrificing quality. And so they created this really cool post about 15 essential shortcuts that you need to know in Cinema 4D. There's even a handy reference PDF you can download and reference to if you forget. And some of the shortcuts involve the object manager, navigating the viewport, cameras, attributes, and so much more. So check it out down below. Time for some freebies here. If you've ever looked or done some sort of character animation work within After Effects, you've probably run across Limber. It's a popular IK system to help animate characters, and now there's a free light version that makes character animation in After Effects accessible to everyone. It's a great way to get started with some inverse kinematics and rigging. If you don't regularly do character animations, this can kind of really help you in a pinch. So mad props for them for making the light version. If you want a rough video on this, let me know in the comments down below, and check out the full version if you're interested in more features. Curtis Holt released a community material pack for Blender. This package includes a blend file containing a variety of useful materials. All you have to do is add this file to one of your asset library folders to be able to drag them into your scenes using the asset browser. It's a name your own price product. Check it out, pretty cool stuff. Can always appreciate more materials. More free stuff by Jenga FX. They are the folks behind Embergen. So they released a free set of VDBs full of fire, smoke, dust, tornadoes, and clouds made with their product Embergen, a real-time volumetric fluid simulation tool. This pack is free and you can download them and use them in all your 3D softwares. If you have something like Stardust, you can even bring them into After Effects and use them there. Check it out and check out Embergen as well. Let's give a quick thanks to our sponsor over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website with for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support. And best of all, if you use promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. Our last set of stories is from the folks over at Action VFX, our friends. They created a whole bunch of new tutorials and content here. How to create a fire breathing effect within After Effects. You'll learn how to kind of composite flame elements in After Effects with techniques on how to create a realistic glowing fire effect. You'll learn how to composite glowing eye effects, how to animate subsurface molting skin effects, adjust timing, add heat distortion, and so much more. The second story is about how to create kind of a Morbius smoke trail effect within After Effects. You'll learn how to use corner pin data from Mocha as trackers, how to combine and composite elements to create a very nice cool smoke trail how to apply the plate's color texture to the smoke trail and add a nice displacement to really sell the distortion effect and much more. The next tutorial is how to create a super speed effect within After Effects. Think like Quicksilver and super fast superheroes. This tutorial is really aimed more towards beginners and they discuss creating mass, using adjustment layers, speed ramping effects, how to composite some energy burst and smoke effects to sell the effects, and how to add a distortion displacement map. The last story is how to create a gun recoil effect within After Effects. So if you're shooting an action sequence or a short film and your actors didn't really sell convincing gun recoil reaction because you know, there isn't really any recoil, then this tip could save you from reshooting. You'll learn how to add a gun recoil in post production using After Effects, no plugins needed, and it can typically be done in any VFX software. So I pretty much wrapped up this video, guys. If you guys like videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.